Next, Mr. Chameleon and the handprint on the ceiling murder case. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters in his most famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer aspirin. Mr. Chameleon, as you all know, is the famous and dreaded detective of Central Police Headquarters who frequently uses a disguise or impersonation to confuse the criminals he is tracking down. In tonight's case, he appears in a particularly interesting disguise which the audience will at all times recognize. Tonight we give you Mr. Chameleon in The Handprint on the Ceiling Murder Case. Were you to pass along East Street in New York, you would see a row of old and decadent brownstone houses, mostly lodgings in bad repair, And in the middle of that row, you would note one particular house, its weather-beaten shutters tightly closed. Obviously an empty house, long deserted and forbidding. A dim street lamp casts a feeble light over its entrance door and reveals a man, his coat collar turned up, his hat low over his eyes, surreptitiously putting a key in the lock. He enters and quietly closes the door behind him. A flashlight focuses on the stairway, and we hear the old steps creak as he climbs them and says to himself, The home of my childhood, the home from which my mother was buried, the home where my brother Joshua died just one year ago. But pull yourself together, man. This is not a sentimental visit, but one to seek something and find it. Ah, here's the door to Joshua's room. I'll go in. That stepladder. Has somebody been here before me? And and this... No. No. Heaven help me out of this. It's a body. Don Elliott's. I must get out of here. But he can't get out. For again we see the old staircase, lighted by a flashlight and hear the steps creak as a second man ascends. He too approaches the door the first man entered. He opens it. He throws his flashlight on the first man and startled says, What? You! What brought you here? (gasps) What's this? So, you finally murdered Donald Elliot. Don't try that on me, Crowder. You murdered him. What? I found Elliot dead, and you sneaking back to make sure you'd not left any evidence. You had plenty of reason for murdering Elliot. And so did you, Crowder. Sure I did, but I didn't kill him. We'll let the police decide that. I'll call the cops quick if that's what you're after. I'm not afraid. Listen, Crowder, let's act like sensible men. Like sensible men? If we call the police and tell them what happened here, I'll accuse you and you'll accuse me, and we'll both be in the sack. Ah. What do you want me to do, Mr. Booth? No more, no less than I'll do. Act like a sensible man. Well, what's the answer to that one, Mr. Booth? I'm listening. If you agree not to call the police, I'll agree not to call them. Let's both get out of this house and say nothing. It may be six months before anyone finds Elliot's body in this empty place, and by that time the trail will be cold. I still say you killed Elliot. But I... I get your point. Then it's a deal. We'll keep the police out of this. Murderer or not, you're smarter than I am, Mr. Booth. And I can see myself taking the rap for you. It's a deal. Mum's the word. Later that evening, Mr. Chameleon, the adroit and dreaded detective, is in the office of the Commissioner of Police at Central Headquarters. And we hear the commissioner saying, 
Shall we go out and get a bite to eat, Chameleon? Or shall I send for a couple of cents? I... Oh, there's that infernal phone again. Hello? Yes, this is the commissioner. What's that? Dead. Where? An empty house in East Street? Well, who are you? Who are you? Wait a minute. No. What's wrong, Commissioner? Well, somebody called up and said there's the body of a murdered man in a vacant house at 1430 East Street. Then... He or she hung up the phone before you could get his name. Well, either that or the operator cut us off. You better get out there, Chameleon. Got the number? 1430 East Street. I'll pick up Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold and hustle along. It's an empty house, all right, Mr. Chameleon. All boarded up. Hop out, Dave. Don't bother ringing the bell. Use your keys. Okay. Sure is a dismal hole, Mr. Chameleon. Dark as a tomb. Hmm. Follow me up the stairs, Dave. Keep your gun in one hand and your flashlight in the other. This may be a trap. Sure. Plenty of guys are laying for you, all right. Now, into that room, Dave. Take it easy. Flash the light into every corner and don't turn your back on that closet door. Mr. Chameleon, have a look at that. You... What, Dave? The body of the stepladder? I don't get you. This house is bare except for a stepladder and a murdered man. Not a stick of furniture, not a sign of life. I guess just as he stepped off the ladder, somebody plugged him. No, Dave. He was shot down from the ladder. You see the uh, floor dust on his clothes where he rolled over? Dave, look where I'm throwing a light. On the ceiling. Hey, that looks like a handprint. The handprint of the murdered man. What was he doing up there? Who is he and why was he killed? We're in for a tough one, all right, Mr. Chameleon. Dave, go next door and ask to use the telephone. Okay. Call headquarters and make a big hullabaloo about it. Talk loud. Say that I want three squad cars of cops out here to surround the house. That we think that we've got a murderer trapped here. Three squad cars of cops? I want the whole neighborhood aroused. Somebody may have seen the murderer coming in here and also... Also what, Mr. Chameleon? The murderer himself may feel there is safety in a crowd and let his curiosity get the best of him. I am sure that he would like to find out whom we've got trapped here. I got you, Mr. Chameleon. There'll be a crowd, all right. They've got a murderer trapped in that house. Stand back there. Get back. Somebody might get shot. Hey there. Didn't you hear me say to stand back? I'm the caretaker of this house. What's happening? Oh, come inside. Mr. Chameleon will want to see you. Chameleon, you say? This way. Mr. Chameleon? Yes? There's a man who says he's the caretaker here. The caretaker? What is your name? John Crowder. I live in the rooming house next door. Whose house is this, Mr. Crowder? The owner's dead. He was Mr. Joshua Booth. Old Joshua Booth? I remember him. Look when I throw this flashlight, Mr. Crowder. <gasps> now, can you identify this murdered man? This is frightful. Who is he? Donald Elliot. He was old Mr. Booth's companion secretary for years. But how did he get here? Mr. Chameleon, here's the owner of the house. The owner? Crowder, why did you tell me the owner was dead? Uh, this gentleman is Mr. Fulton Booth, the old gentleman's brother. Is that correct, Mr. Booth? Yes, and you are? Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters. Now, uh, watch this light, Mr. Booth. And tell me, uh, well, whose body is this? This is impossible. It looks like Donald Elliot. There's something funny about it. What's funny about it, Mr. Booth? He was supposed to be in Europe. Now he, he's dead in this empty house. How did you happen to find him? I think Mr. Crowder rang up police headquarters and told us. What's this, Crowder? You rang up the police? I didn't ring up anybody. Mr. Booth, when were you last in this house? Uh, about six months ago. You're a liar. You were here tonight. Just in time, Crowder, to find you trying to sneak back into this room where you'd killed Elliot. You mean just in time to stop you getting away after you'd killed him? Mr. Chameleon, he killed Elliot because Elliot got his brother, old Joshua, to cut him out of his will. Mr. Chameleon, that's a lie. Crowder killed Elliot because he hated him for getting my brother to throw him out of his job. My brother didn't leave a penny. This house is about to be sold for back taxes. After my brother died, I befriended this man, put him on here as caretaker. This is the thanks I get. Mr. Booth, how did Elliot manage to have your brother disown you? Uh, he accused me of stealing from Brother Joshua. Stealing what? Valuables. What valuables? I don't know. I could never find out. Crowder, 
How did this murdered man maneuver you out of your job? Uh, for the same reason, Mr. Comedian, for stealing valuables. What were the valuables, Crowder? Well, I don't know. I have no idea. Mr. Booth, how is it that when you found Elliot murdered and suspected Crowder of that murder, you did not call the police? Well, I, I started to report it, Mr. Comedian, and then Crowder threatened to accuse me. Yes? Well... We realized we both looked suspicious, so we, we made an agreement to keep our mouths shut and say that, nothing. That is very difficult for me to believe, but let's drop it. Booth, you paint your brother as an unbelievably suspicious man. Was there anybody in the world that he did trust? Nobody, ex besides Elliot and that crackpot woman he was planning to marry, Arabella Hastings. Are you telling me that old Joshua Booth was planning to get married? Fantastic. Who is this woman? Where did he meet her? On a round-the-world tour shortly before he died. Did this Arabella Hastings, if such a woman exists, know the murdered man, Donald Elliot? Oh, certainly she did. They were all on the tour together. That's true, Mr. Comedian. I've seen her snooping around outside this house. When was that, Crowder? Well, last time I saw her was late yesterday afternoon. Has she a key to the house? No, and I'm not letting her in. Where can I find Arabella Hastings? Well, she's got an apartment in the Dorchester Arms. Everything you and Booth have told me sounds ridiculous, Crowder. You both look guilty of murder. I shall try to find this Arabella Hastings, if she really exists. And for your sake, I hope she does. And a short time later, at the Dorchester Arms, Mr. Chameleon finds that Arabella Hastings does exist. Will we hear her saying? You say you are Mr. Chameleon, the detective? I'm writing a book, and it's very disturbing to have my flow of thought interrupted. Oh, you've probably been reading my book on the psychology of criminal activity among the Tibetans. Is that what brought you here? I am afraid, Miss Hastings, Then that it I... must be about one of my other books. I've written on so many subjects. It can't be that you're interested in my treatise on behaviorism of the adolescent male Indian. No, it's about a murder. I don't remember having written any book on that subject. I am not speaking about books or fiction, Miss Hastings, but about a very real murder. The murder of Donald Elliot. Donald Elliot? Who killed him? If I knew, I would not be here, Miss Hastings. I understand that you were rather well acquainted with him. Who told you that, Mr. Chameleon? The caretaker of the vacant house in which he was killed. A man named Crowder and also Mr. Fulton Booth. Oh, is that so? They would... Well, did they happen to tell you, too, that they both bore very deep psychological grudges against Donald Elliot? A common mental pattern among men of their type. If you will confine yourself to more simple expressions, I think I shall understand you better, Miss Hastings. After all, I am only a policeman. I understand. The limited scope of the police type of mind. I've often wanted to write about I was it. also informed that you were planning to marry Fulton Booth's elder brother, Joshua, shortly before his death. Purely for companionship, Mr. Chameleon. Yes, so I would gather. What? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, what I started to say is that I was also informed that you were seen outside the murder house as recently as yesterday afternoon about six o'clock. Well, what of it? I was also seen in Greenwich Village, in Central Park, and the Museum of Natural History yesterday afternoon. Do you happen to have a key to the door of the Museum of Natural History? What's that? I'm sorry, Miss Hastings, slip of the tongue. I meant to say, uh, do you have a key to the empty house in which Donald Elliot was murdered? Why should I? I'm sure I don't know. I am merely asking. Have you a key to that house? Certainly not. Have you ever had one? I never had a key to that house. Mm. I'm expecting a guest, Mr. Chameleon, so you'll have to excuse me. I will open the door for you, Miss Hastings. Oh, I'm sorry, Arabella. I hope I'm not intruding. Peter Barclay, I wasn't expecting you. I... Came because of Donald Elliot's murder. Well, what about it? Yes, what about it, Mr. Barclay? I am Chameleon from Central Police Headquarters. Why, nothing, Mr. Chameleon, nothing, nothing at all. Uh, Chameleon. Oh, you're the detective who's famous for his disguises. Uh, Mr. Barclay, were you acquainted with the murdered man, Donald Elliot? Only casually, only casually. I'm sure Arabella, Miss Hastings, can tell you more about him than I can. What are you trying to say, Peter? You knew Elliot as well as I did. Uh, where did you meet Elliot, Mr. Barkland? He was old Joshua Booth's companion secretary. Uh, Arabella and I met him and old Booth on a round-the-world tour last year. You mean that you and Arabella Hastings went on that tour together? Peter and I met each other on that tour, Mr. Chameleon. But, Arabella, don't no, you... Let me do the talking, Peter. The time to make up a story, Peter and Arabella, is when a cop is not on the scene. 
Peter, is it not true that you and Arabella Hastings knew each other before that tour? And don't try lying. We did know each other, but only slightly. He means, Mr. Chameleon, our being on that ship was only a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. Let's have the full story, Peter, and fast. How did you get hold of a key to the house where Elliot was murdered? You pinched it from Arabella Hastings, did you not? Oh, so that's her story, is it? Peter! She gave me that key. That's where I got it, Mr. Chameleon. Mr. Chameleon, you in there? What's happened, Dave? Plenty. Crowder, the caretaker, was murdered about half an hour ago. Shot to death? Yes, sir, in the same room of the empty house where Donald Elliot was killed. Where were you half an hour ago, Miss Arabella Hastings? Oh, uh... At a delicatessen store. Where were you, Peter Barclay? Sitting on a bench in that park over there. You are both lying, but we'll go into that later. In the meanwhile, Detective Sergeant Arnold will take both your fingerprints. <laughs> Mr. Chameleon and the handprint on the ceiling murder case continues in just a moment. A very important thing to know about genuine Bayer aspirin is that its single active ingredient is so gentle to the system, mothers give it even to small children on their doctor's advice. Always remember this because it means that when you have an ordinary headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain, you can take Bayer aspirin with complete confidence. For Bayer aspirin gives you more than fast relief. It also gives you the dependable relief that's important to your health. Bayer aspirin speed is proved by the fact that it actually is ready to go to work in two seconds, and its dependability is proved by its record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect, a record that no other pain reliever can match. So don't experiment when you're in pain. Don't risk using drugs that have not stood the test of time. Instead, use something that millions know from experience is fast and completely dependable too. genuine Bayer aspirin. When you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Now back to Mr. Chameleon and the handprint on the ceiling murder case. Two men have been murdered in an old, empty house. Donald Elliott, secretary of old Joshua Booth, the owner, who has been dead a year and Crowder, the caretaker. Both bodies found in the same room beside a stepladder, and on the ceiling, the handprint of the first murdered man. It is now the following morning in Mr. Chameleon's office at Central Police Headquarters, and we hear Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold saying, Here are those fingerprints you told me to get, Mr. Chameleon. This set is Arabella Hastings, and this one Peter Barclay's. Uh Uh-huh. How'd they take to being fingerprinted, Dave? (laughs) The Hastings dame acted like her fingers were made specially to scratch my eyes out. She called us both cops with the retarded minds of apes. <laughs> well, don't let it get you down, Dave. She is the kind of woman who spends her life writing books that nobody reads. Huh? Uh, what about Peter Barclay? How did he behave? Uh, he's a slick boy, Mr. Chameleon. One of those I'm an innocent man, so what's the difference acts. Uh, did they say anything to each other about a key to the murder house, Dave? I had to pull them apart. That's what they were both shouting about at once. Oh. Uh-huh. The dame was accusing Barkley of telling you she had given him the key, trying to get himself off the spot and her on. She swears she never had a key. I uh, know that it's against regulations for a cop to admit that he's tricky. But um, between us, Dave, Oh, so I, you um... planted that one. I get you, Mr. Chameleon. <laughs> Wait a second, Dave. Hmm? Operator, uh, give me the commissioner's office. Hello, this is the commissioner. Chameleon speaking, commissioner. Oh, yes. I want every locksmith in New York checked to find out if he made a duplicate key to the house where Donald Elliott was murdered. Do you know how many locksmiths there are in this town, Chameleon? I am no good at quizzes, commissioner. Uh, Ask me if we need this information, and I will give you the answer straight out. All right. I'll put every man we've got on the job. Oh, (laughs) and while you're on the phone, Chameleon... Boys have turned that old house upside down and no sign of the murder gun. I didn't think they'd find it, Commissioner. You got anything yet, Chameleon? Mm Mm-hmm. First-class jawbreaker. Well, you'll get the killer. I'm not worried about that. Good luck to you, old man. Goodbye. Did you pick up uh, Fulton Booth, Dave? I didn't have to, Mr. Chameleon. He came here under his own power. He's outside now, raring to see you. Uh Aho! Well, I wonder what that means. Bring him in, Dave, please. Mr. Chameleon, I'll see you now, Mr. Booth. Come in. 
Well, what brings you here, Booth? Is it to make one of your deals with me, like you made with Crowder? Now, listen, Mr. Comedian. I have an idea. It's to ask me to put a manslaughter charge instead of first-degree murder against you in exchange for telling me what strange attraction that old vacant house has for so many oddly assorted people. That's not why I came, Mr. Chameleon. I know An attraction that leads people to it, that causes men in it to be murdered. What is the answer, Uh, Booth? I know it looks bad for me, but I know as little about these murders as you do. Don't put any bets on what I don't know, Booth. I would hate to see you lose. You've got no real evidence against me, Chameleon. Now watch this, Booth. You told me that your brother Joshua cut you from his will because the murdered Elliot told him that you were stealing... Valuables. What were those valuables? I don't know. I told you before I don't know. And I tell you that you're lying. Now, tell me, what is the strange attraction of that vacant house? What is hidden in that house? What is the fantastic secret? I wish I knew, Mr. Chameleon, but I don't... Notice this door behind my desk, Booth. What's that got to do with it? Just a few feet behind it are the iron barred doors of prison. And I can't quite make up my mind whether to open it to you now or later. Uh, Don't, Chameleon, don't. Were you on that round-the-world tour with your brother? Yes, I was. Had you ever met either the woman your brother later became engaged to marry or a man named Peter Barclay before you boarded the ship? Now, I caution you, Booth. This is a vital question. No, I... That is to say, yes, but not intimately. That'll be all, Booth. You may go now. Goodbye. Mr. Chameleon. That ship to shore call you put in for the captain of the liner Ajax is coming through now. Oh, the ship all our suspects took on their round-the-world tour. There it is, Mr. Canadian. Hello? Hello? Captain Thorgson of the liner Ajax speaking. Captain Thorgson, this is the New York police speaking. My name is Chameleon. What can I do for you, Mr. Chameleon? It involves a murderer in New York. I think you can give me information that I need. Yes? Captain Thorgson, do you remember an old man named Joshua Booth? who was aboard on a round-the-world tour with you a little over a year ago. Uh, Yes, Joshua Booth, a queer old man. Couldn't forget him. Well, what I want to know is this. Yes, sir? Did you by any chance know how Joshua Booth occupied himself ashore at your various ports of call, Captain? Uh, That's why I couldn't forget him. The old man was buying diamonds and jewels by the hatful every place we stopped. Are you sure of this, Captain? I'll testify to it, Mr. Chameleon. Joshua Booth entrusted the jewels to me for keeping in the ship safe. Did any of his party, the people that he was with, know of these jewel purchases? Well, the old man tried to keep it undercover, but his brother and some man and woman he was with were all trying to pump me about it. And naturally you didn't tell them anything? Not a word, Mr. Chameleon. When the voyage ended in New York, what then? Well, the old man himself came to me. Nobody with him. He had a traveling bag. I opened the safe and he put the jewels in the bag and that's the last I saw of them. Captain, I can't thank you enough. We'll dock in New York in about five days, so you'll know where to get to me if you want me. Thanks again, Captain, and goodbye. Dave, we have got what we're after. Whoopee, now what? Send the fingerprint men out to the murder house instantly. Get every fingerprint in that house everywhere. Right away, Mr. Cummings. And at the same time, send the searching squad out. Tear the house down brick by brick if you have to, but find those jewels. The mystery of why people were murdered in it, why there was a handprint on the ceiling, is solved. Then the case is over, Mr. Chameleon. Except for discovering who killed Donald Elliot and Crowder. And now, a few hours later, in the murder house, a dejected Detective Sergeant Arnold greets Mr. Chameleon with... Mr. Chameleon, it's a washout. Somebody got here before us. We found the old man's bag, but not the jewels. Where had he concealed the bang, Dave? Of all places, in a phony back behind an old jelly closet in the cellar. It was ripped wide open. Oh, one of those charming people, Fulton Booth, Arabella Hastings, or the slippery Peter Barclay has them. And that person is the killer. Sure, but which one? I've got to get into those people's houses and move fast. You mean in disguise, Mr. Chameleon? Mm Mm-hmm. Disguised as a good Irish fireman, Tim McGrath. And 30 minutes later, we find Mr. Chameleon about to enter the first home of a suspect. He is disguised as Tim McGrath, an Irish fireman, and he is making Arabella Hastings' flat his first stop. But he can hear from outside her door that somebody has preceded him. And you accuse me of getting away with the bag, Arabella? I wasn't near the infernal house. Stop lying to me, Peter. I saw you sneaking out through the back gate just before those police cars pulled up. I tell you I wasn't there. And besides, what were you doing there, Arabella? Chameleon would like to know that. Do you think I've forgotten how you tried to throw me into Chameleon's hands a few hours ago? Who's there? 
Fire department, let me in. There's no fire here. Open that door or I'll break it down. I've got an axe, now open the door. One, two... Open it, Arabella, you fool. See for yourself, there's no fire here. We've got a report saying that you're concealing explosives here. What? I've never heard of such a thing. What are you talking about? Explosives, lady. And I'm searching this place for them. Orders from the chief. Well, go ahead and search for them, then. You'll not find anything here. What's in that bundle under the sofa, lady? Something this gentleman brought with him. She's a liar. What is your story, mister? Hand me that package, lady. I'll handle it carefully. Oh! No! No! Peter, how could you? I knew I'd find you here, Peter Barclay. It's Fulton Bull. So you and Arabella thought you'd get away with it. Uh, get away with what, mister? What's this fireman doing here, Arabella? I am here to get the jewels one of you finally found in Joshua Booth's house today. It's Chameleon. Mr. Chameleon. Arabella's turned us into Chameleon, Peter. Look out, Arabella, get behind me. Fulton Booth's ready to kill you. <gasps> so you did it, Fulton, with Peter. Move aside, Mr. Chameleon. Let me get behind you. Give me that gun, miss. No! Aha! Good work, <gasps> Dave. The gun that killed Donald Elliot and Crowder. Now, give me the evidence on which I arrest this woman, Arabella Hastings, for murder. Sworn statement from Thomas Stein, locksmith of Flushing Street, Brooklyn. Positive identification of the Hastings woman's snapshot we took as purchaser of duplicate key to the murder house. Positive identification, Hastings' fingerprints on door, back of cupboard, leading to place Joshua Booth's jewels were hidden. And this gun I just took from her. Right, Dave. Mr. Chameleon. And these jewels. Your fingerprints all over the wrapping, I'm sure, Arabella Hastings. And this missing clip from the dress that you're wearing dropped in the basement when you unearthed the jewels today. You killed Elliot and Crowder because you thought they were going to find the jewels first. Mr. Chameleon, I never believed you'd catch me. I can't believe it. Uh, charge it to a couple of cops with the retarded minds of apes. Oh! I suggest that you write a book on that subject in prison. A short book. I uh, don't think that you'll have time for a long one. And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. Whenever you feel like you're catching cold, remember the way that thousands use to quickly relieve painful cold symptoms. That way is to take two Bayer aspirin tablets with a full glass of water. Because Bayer aspirin is ready to go to work almost instantly, your discomfort is quickly relieved. And to ease the pain of a sore throat due to a cold, just do this. Dissolve three Bayer aspirin tablets in one-third of a glass of water and gargle. Used this way, Bayer aspirin makes a highly potent medicinal gargle that quickly soothes soreness and brings welcome relief to the irritated membranes of your throat. When you buy, be sure to ask for genuine Bayer aspirin by its full name, never by the name aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Listen next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in The Lost Bride Murder Case. Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson and written by Frank Hummert, with music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. New Lion's Toothpaste does what no other toothpaste can. Thousands of laboratory tests on scores of individual teeth reveal that new Lion's Toothpaste actually gets teeth two and a half to five and a half times brighter than any of the five leading brands. Brighter by far, in fact, than any toothpaste on the market. Remember, it's not just another toothpaste, not just another old toothpaste with an added ingredient. Lion's Toothpaste is utterly new, radically different. It cleans without soap, polishes without chalk. Lion's Toothpaste. Listen for Mr. Chameleon in The Lost Bride Murder Case next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>